You're welcome to Open Heaven's Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God. I'm Salam Manager Haruna, your host. We are glad to have you. Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. E. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary is intended to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Monday, the 13th day of December 2021, and our topic for today is, Let Him Take Your Burden. Let us pray. Our most gracious Father, our burden bearer, our friend and our anchor. Lord, we thank you for all the great and marvelous works you do in our lives. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for redeeming us to yourself. As we go into your word, we ask that you give us fresh insights. Help us, Lord, to be obedient to this. And help us, Lord, to let go of every burden that we may be bearing in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You are welcome back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20. Ezekiel 18 verse 20 reads, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20 And our scripture reading is from the same book of Ezekiel chapter 18. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 4 now. Ezekiel chapter 18 from verse 1 to 4 reads, The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean ye? that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. God bless the reading of his word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now to the body of our devotional. Our Father in the Lord tells us today that the righteousness of God demands that the soul that commits sin would die, as we see in our memory verse today. John 10.10, 10, however, gives us an alternative to sin and death. It reads, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He saves us from the life of sin and ultimately eternal death, blessing us with abundant life instead. Another truth I want to share with us is that the righteousness of God does not allow an offender to be punished twice for one offense. Since Jesus Christ our Redeemer has suffered for our sins, we are discharged and acquitted. As long as you do not commit that sin again, once Jesus has forgiven you, your forgiveness is absolute. Isaiah 53 verse 4 to 5 reads, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Beloved, I am using this medium to appeal to you to come to Jesus today and he will relieve you of your burden of sin. As a matter of fact, the cross he carried before his crucifixion was for you and me. All you need to do is confess your sins and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and there is no truth in us. 1 John 1 verse 8 we deny ourselves the privilege of the great burden bearer if we refuse to come to him and make him the Lord of our lives. He must be your Lord and Savior. I pray that the Almighty God will relieve you of every burden of sin and sorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless his word to us today. Hallelujah. The topic of our devotional today is, Let him take your burden. Sin is such a burden so heavy that it crushes anyone under it. This is the reason why our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is calling that everyone with a heavy burden brings it and lays it at his feet, with a promise of giving rest to as many as would come. He tells us in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, 
and I will give you rest. He is the rest giver. Rest from sin and the crushing weight of sorrow that accompanies it. Our Father in the Lord shares two very important truths with us today which we are going to consider as we proceed. The first of which is the fact that the righteousness of God demands that the soul that commits sin would die. It is just like we see in our memory verse and even our scripture reading for today. In our scripture reading, for example, in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 2 and 3 tells us that the proverb where it is said, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge, will no longer hold. Verse 4 says that behold all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Remember that scripture tells us that the wages of sin is death. There is always a commensurate wage, a payment for every sin or offense that a man commits. But our Father and the Lord tells us that glory to God who has given us a way out. And we see this in John chapter 10 verse 10, where we find the works of the enemy which is to kill, to steal and to destroy, and the redemptive work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which is to give us life and this life to give us abundantly. The next and also very important truth that our Father and the Lord shares with us today is the truth that the righteousness of God does not allow an offender to be punished twice for one offense. Remember we said earlier that everyone who commits sin is deserving of his wages. But here the righteousness of God also does not allow an offender to be punished twice for the same offense. However, I would like us to see the clause that is attached to it. And that clause is that as long as that offender does not commit that sin again, the moment that the Lord Jesus forgives you, your forgiveness is absolute. He has suffered for our sins, he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, so that we can receive forgiveness. And that forgiveness is open to as many as would come to him to receive it. However, I would like us to note very importantly also, that this grace that we have received does not become a license to become perpetual and habitual offenders. It is very important that we take note of this because grace today has been abused. Forgiveness is obtained when there is repentance and an absolute turnaround and rejection of those old ways. Sin, like we already know, can be a gateway to allow the enemy access into an individual's life. So when a man receives forgiveness and goes back to his old ways, he is still granting access to the enemy. We can learn this from the words of our Lord Jesus Christ to the man who was healed by the pool of Bethesda. In John chapter 5 verse 14, it reads, Afterwards, Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. In other words, the possibility of a worse thing coming upon him was there if he sinned. It is important that we do not take the grace of God for granted. Hebrews 10 verse 26 and 27 tells us that, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. You would note that it talks about willfully continuing in sin after having the knowledge of this truth. Our Lord Jesus remains our burden bearer and we trust him today that as we cast all our burdens and our cares upon him, there would be no going back in Jesus' name. We would bow our heads now and pray. We would say, Father, I bring my burden to you today in genuine repentance. Please forgive me and lift my burden today in the mighty name of Jesus. Ask him out of his sincere heart. Say, Father, have mercy on me. Take over my burdens. I bring them to you, Lord. Search my heart. Whatever weight or burden you find there, Lord, let it be taken away in the name of Jesus. I come before you in genuine repentance. I trade my burdens for your peace. Also ask him today that we receive the grace never to go back the same way that we've come in Jesus' name. The grace to say final goodbyes to whatever has been holding us back before now. We declare that every stronghold be broken. Let every siege be over. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for your word that has come our way this day. Thank you for lifting burdens. Lord, we declare today that we've come to the end of ourselves. We ask that you take over. Have your way in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. In our Bible in one year reading plan for today, we read from the book of Ezekiel chapter 43, 
down to chapter 48. Praise God. We would also not do without appreciating you for joining us today. We sincerely want to say a big thank you. You are the reason why we are here. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this daily, please send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Remember that you can also do well today to be a blessing to someone by sharing this with them. As you go forth today, may every burden be lifted. Enjoy the peace of the Lord. Have a blessed and fulfilling week ahead. See you tomorrow again and bye for now. I believe you enjoyed today's devotional. We'd love to hear from you. Kindly leave a comment. You can connect with us on any of our social media handles attached. God bless you. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.